Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing fantastic and that you're all having a wonderful day. As always, leaving a comment, a like, or subscribing helps out the channel immensely. Uh, and without further ado, let's jump right into it. Uh, you know the deal. It's, it's, it's a weird time to be in the world, and it's a weird time to be in crypto, so get ready for some... Very weird news for those of you not looking at the screen. It says Ethereum price stands at $1,299. Will the bulls show up now? Maybe. No one really knows. A lot of the price news is oddly more speculative than usual. We, 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 we tend to get a... Uh, Bitcoin's going up by 15%, Ethereum's going down by 12 Here are the numbers to look for. This is kind of like a, well, prices are trending like downward sideways. And I think a lot of people simply didn't know what to write or what to speculate about. It says Bitcoin's price grinds lower, but the key breakdown support is still intact. A lot of people are still touting those numbers as 19,000 is the support level we need to get over 20,000 and stay there for the course of a 24-hour period for bitcoin to be able to move back on up to unforeseen levels that we've never foreseen before it says bitcoin whales accumulating on binance according to on chain metrics there's a lot of whale accumulation news across multiple coins millionaires are buying this this is how much they bought these coins are being accumulated these coins are being taken off that website it's kind of all over the place accumulation of bitcoin has been occurring on major exchanges according to recent findings from analytics firm crypto quant Crypto markets may be in the depths of a lengthening bear market, but that provides the perfect environment to accumulate Bitcoin. This is exactly what's happening. According to CryptoQuan CEO Ki Young Ju, that is J-U, who posted his findings on the 20th of October, the metrics reveal that Binance has the highest volume of Bitcoin spot trading for the world's premier crypto asset. So, a lot of people on Binance are accumulating. I, I think the accumulation levels that they have compared to other crypto exchanges comes out to 84%. And then after them, there's a 9% accumulation rate on Coinbase as Binance is the largest crypto exchange on the planet. It says $940 million worth of Bitcoin move off of Coinbase. Fueling speculation, a whale is accumulating. I would assume so. Who takes off $940 million from a cryptocurrency exchange? You're not really even a whale at that point. You're more of a building. Like how many people have over $5 million worth of Bitcoin? How many have $100 million? And then you go up to $940 million worth of Bitcoin. That is definitely a building that is accumulating. And also, once again, like I told you, it says large Ethereum whales add a whopping 3.5 million ETH to their bags. This metric is from the last month, the last 30 days. They have found out that there are multiple whales and usually I think a whale is categorized as someone who has over something million dollars not eth dollars worth of uh something in the cryptocurrency space and within the last 30 days 3.5 million eth uh was purchased by them this is also uh tying directly into i don't even know if i have it here if i had it in the last video i'm not really sure there's a lot of stuff happening at the exact same time if you were looking on twitter i i posted something that i saw online and no, I'm pretty sure it was also yesterday. Uh, Ethereum's what is it? issuance rate? The amount of ether that's being uh, created uh, has fallen by 98 percent. So the issuance rate of ether has dropped by 98 98 percent. So there's barely any ether being made. Oh, also, uh, gigantic high five! You can't see it, but I'm actually smacking my hand into the air, air high fiving. All of you who joined the uh, the bearish campaign yesterday, I'm going to be doing it for a couple of weeks. It's based off of the news that we had yesterday that uh, basically whatever people are talking about on social media, the bots, institutional bots who are trading cryptocurrencies tend to do the opposite. 
So everything I wrote yesterday and will continue to write about anything that's happening within crypto uh, will from now on be bearish just to try and see if I can actually move the market in the other direction. Somebody was like, this is interesting, but a little bit intense. And I was like, that's who I am. I, I'm, I'm, I'm interesting, but also a little bit intense. Have you missed the last like thousand something videos? <laughs> anyway, um, that's all the whale news that we have right now. A lot of it focused heavily on whales buying. This much XRP, like a couple of days ago, just left an exchange. Are whales accumulating? Probably. Do you have any normal friends who have just gotten into crypto who have like 145 million XRP? Probably not. So they're probably going to be a whale. I don't know why these questions keep popping up. Also in uh, Get Ready, a gigantic recession is coming news. This was also in incredibly popular in the price news. The CEO of global investment bank Goldman Sachs, his name is David Solomon, sees a good chance of a U.S. recession. He stressed that the environment heading into 2023 is one that you've got to be cautious and prepared for. Basically, today was for some reason, rich person gets onto the news and talks about exactly how bad the economy is doing, as if we all don't know it. But for some reason, all the constant rumblings right now from them is that they are talking about that we are going to have a terrible, terrible recession. I'm not sure if it's just them time trying to be more popular or doing that same thing that they were doing before. For those of you who miss it over the last couple of years, I'm talking very fast. Usually what ends up happening is rich people, usually uh, very rich people. So I'm not talking about like three, four, five million. I mean like hundreds of millions, if not billions, who are prominently normally in the news. For some reason, at the same time, come out of their rich people cave, usually called the mansion, and they announce at some point, oh, X is about to happen. But like four months later, they announce, oh, no, the other X is about to happen. And I think it, they use it to kind of hedge their bets because they all kind of want to they all want to be more popular and richer than they already are. And they do it as a way to kind of say, well, well, I told you in, in March that there was going to be a recession. And then by the time we get to September, they go, well, there's not a recession because I told you that they're also so they kind of play both sides of the field. Veteran investor Jim Rogers, who co-founded the Quantum Fund with billionaire investor George Soros, expects the bear market to get much worse, adding that this recession will be the worst in his lifetime. Fantastic. He said we are probably going to have one last rally, but that will be it, he predicted. Then we are coming to the end of the line. Be worried. This is what every other rich person has been saying, but they also said the exact same thing about Bitcoin in 2013, 14, and 15, and now they all own Bitcoin. They said the same exact thing about the silver and gold market a number of years ago. I mean, like, and they meant like a, a complete collapse, not like drops in prices. They meant like everything was going to be obliterated. No one knows if we are going to be in a recession depression. It seems as if we are heading in that direction, not even because of what the Fed is doing anymore. There's a lot of other stuff that's currently taking place in the world um, right now. So, I mean, everything is kind of accumulating into one gigantic dirty bowl. At the moment, uh, stocks have fallen. Yeah, remember yesterday we were talking about how crypto actually bucked the trend and everyone was like, bucking trend, bucking trend. Not, yeah, anyway, I was going to say Buckingham Palace because it sounded the same. Anyway, the point is um, yesterday was the first day in a year that stocks rose and crypto went down. And I guess maybe crypto psychic because everything else also fell down as well. It says stocks fall and yields rise as investors pour over, that is P-O-R-E, over corporate earnings, it says Asian stock market indices or indexes tumble as risk off profile heats yields reach 4.1% and oil soars. There is currently a situation in one particular country. They're the largest in Asia. Um, things ain't looking so hot there is the way that one would say it. Uh, apparently, remember the situation before where people were for years paying to get real estate projects done and then none of them were being completed and there were people who were outside walking in the streets with pieces of paper above their heads that had like words on them. 
Right. So apparently that's gotten even worse. There appears to be no respite and or uh, rest for them as no um, solution has been found and probably will not. Uh, They also have a situation where, remember where we were all told to stay home? Yeah, that one. Uh, That's still going on there. And uh, people logically aren't too happy with that. And the value of their currency continues to decline. And people were expecting the ruling only party to um, give them some type of information as to how to move things forward. And none of that was given during a speech, as far as we know from what I'm reading online. And then stocks kind of collapsed. So... Um, right. That is currently draining the energy and money from a huge amount of other systems as well. Remember how like we're always talking about like whatever happens in the States is, you know, also ends up rumbling everywhere else. But part of the problem, here's the, here's the major problem is that that one particular country, for those of you who haven't gotten it, it's China. I'm, I, I don't know how many, how, how much more clear I could have been. The issue is, is that um, since around 2007 or so, every country has been very tangled up with them as far as like investments. Everyone saw that their economy was going to be doing great and therefore everyone began to invest in it. So not only do countries owe them a huge amount in debt, but also a huge amount of money from other countries are actually locked up in that country and now their country is doing absolutely terrible, and therefore it's dragging everything else down with it. Right. So, um, at the moment, it says stocks close lower as earnings and inflation figures roll in. Apparently, it took two days, I'm not sure why, uh, for people to really get the gist or understanding that inflation is not going away. There are a lot of calls from other governments around the world who are like, we need to get this under control. They know gosh darn well that they cannot and will not be getting it under control anytime soon. And now it's just really a waiting game uh, to see who plays or who loses at chicken first. Uh, Will we fall into a recession? Will the Fed allow us to fall into a recession? Will someone scream loud enough and that'll make the Fed eventually start printing money again or going back to what they were doing before? Because the only options are now, either uh, we fall into a terrible recession that ends up lasting for two years and might fall into a depression, or the Fed goes back to their previous monetary policy. There seems to be no in and outs of it. The only thing that they told us that was going to work was raising interest rates. Raising interest rates would lower inflation back to 2 or 3 or 4%. Remember, we heard this at the beginning of the year, and that would be kind of the end of it. It's been an entire year, and nothing has worked. Inflation continues to rise or is at the exact same level or is moving higher in other countries. Other economic policies around the world have not gotten any better. A lot of countries are talking about turning their money printers back on. And once again, it's a matter of who loses that chicken first. Is it the economy or is it the Fed? Will they wait for everyone to fall into a disastrous, uh, tumultuous recession? Or will they simply go, okay, we have to do what we were doing before. Either way, inflation is here to stay. So that's the situation that we are currently in. I told you there's a lot happening. And this is like every single day. I've been discussing this with my friends and we kind of... Hello, friends, if you're listening. Uh, A lot of times we tend to either have dinner together. I'm really big into drinking tea. It's incredible. You got to try it. And we sit there sometimes and I'm like, does anyone, does anyone else feel like this is, this is a lot? Like it's just constantly every single day, like more and more keeps happening and the economy is not helping at all either. So, you know, that's just kind of where we currently are. Anyway. At the moment, whales building, building whales are accumulating massive amounts of crypto. Crypto prices are trending sideways downward. It's the same exact way that the stock markets are moving. A lot of rich people have gone onto television in the last 18 hours to announce that they are expecting disastrous economic, whatever they're talking about. Uh, Asian stocks are currently plummeting. Uh, inflation around the world continues to rise. Stocks are going down. Yeah, great. So it's, it's all rosy from here. 
that, that's, all, that's all the price news that we have right now. And yeah, let's move on. In the most popular news ever that we've ever gotten, electric vehicle manufacturer Tesla has made no further changes to its remaining stash of Bitcoin. In the third quarter of 2022, despite nearly a $1 billion sell-off in the previous quarter. The company's quarter three reports, released on the 19th of October, shows $218 million worth of digital assets remaining on its balance sheets, with no reported losses in the value of its holdings. They did not sell. Based on current prices, it's estimated that Tesla still holds around 9,720 BTC. The most popular news story of the day, my friends, was that Tesla has not sold any of their Bitcoin. The amount of news floating around talking about that Elon Musk was... I'm not joking. I'm not sure why you give this ridiculous man so much power. Talking about that Elon Musk was getting ready to save the cryptocurrency market. I saw a video... Another video with someone discussing that they were expecting as they did not sell their Bitcoin, this made them even more bullish on Dogecoin. So they were going to be buying more because Elon Musk must be preparing something behind the scenes to save the cryptocurrency market. What? Like what? what's going on mentally with a lot of people out there that you think he's some kind of like savior for everything? I'm not going to go into that, but anyway, the point is, even this title, Elon Musk's Tesla is still hodling $218 million in Bitcoin. You can find the articles if you want. I refused to show any of you anything like that. I don't want your eyes to even see something as ridiculous as people talking about Elon Musk is about to save the cryptocurrency market. The news is, the most popular news story is that during their earnings report, I believe it was something positive and Tesla stock went up. Uh, they mentioned before, earlier this year, uh, that things weren't too good for the company in a particular country that starts with a C and ends with an INA that we were just talking about. And a lot of people were scared that this was still going on. Apparently, their earnings report came in positive. And then during all of this on the paperwork, it said that they still hold exactly as much Bitcoin as they did before. And people just thought this was absolutely swell. That's the Tesla is still holding their Bitcoin news. That's wonderful. I hope it works out for them. Let's move on. Also in the news, this was also quite popular. Fidelity did that's a weird photo. His hands are gigantic. Like what is he doing with that ether? That's that's a weird that's a very weird Fidelity Digital and do you see it? Did he did he kidnap them? Like what's happening there? That's a that's a really don't okay. Fidelity Digital Assets, the crypto wing of the four point five trillion dollar asset manager Fidelity, logically, is set to offer Ether custody and trading services to his institutional clients later this month. According to an electronic mail to Fidelity's customers shared on Twitter, the crypto arm announced new institutional Ethereum capabilities for institutional investors starting on the 28th of October. Here's the tweet for it right here, and here's the little snippet of them emailing their institutional investors that they're going to be allowing them to start using Ethereum, the post states that investors will be able to buy, sell, and transfer Ether using the same model provided for Bitcoin investments today. They said with the Ethereum merge completed, many investors are looking at Ethereum through a new lens, likely referring to Ethereum shift to the environmentally friendly proof of stake model. Yeah, so Fidelity is holding true to what they said before. 
We've heard about 38 bajillion times already that they are definitely into crypto. They announced support for Bitcoin since 2019, I believe. They announced before that they were going to start the process of allowing customers to be able to hold cryptocurrencies with them, if I am not mistaken. I don't really know. I think the beginning is just supposed to be obviously the wealthiest of the wealthy. That's how you get all the big monies into their system. So... Cool. I think they already custody, what is it, like five or seven trillion dollars is something absolutely gar gargantuan. Um, wonderful. I hope it works out for them. I assume that it will. I assume we're going to start hearing about a number of other players who are also going to be doing the exact same thing. We've already heard from a bunch of them because usually once the largest figures in the space begin to do something, everyone else begins to do the exact same. So once again, um, this is during a downtrend, a bear market, if you will. Prices are falling, but institutional support and banking support and the country support continues to skyrocket. So anytime that you might be feeling uh, down, if you will, uh, just remember that every single day is constantly full of very good news. I mean, except for like the economy news, but that's, you know, that's completely out of our control. We didn't make inflation happen. Anyway, that's the Fidelity news happening next week. So usually you, we get around a week or two. Every time uh, news happens, it works like this. A week before something happens, we get news that is going to happen. We get news on the day of that X has actually happened. And then a week or two after, we get news that X was either successful or not successful. That's how it always works. So in two weeks after the 28th of October, we will be receiving news from somewhere who's like, Fidelity only has a million dollars worth of Ethereum, or it's going to be like Fidelity has $900 million. It's always kind of, we'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, that's the Fidelity is allowing customers to purchase Ethereum next week news. Issuance rate has dropped by 98%. Keep that in your head. Let's move on. Also, and this was popular, but really? Okay, so long story short, uh, someone allegedly apparently found the draft of a bill that's being created for the DeFi sector. So the news was a couple of weeks ago that apparently there was a draft law that was being pushed through for stable coins. Apparently that's not happening. It's not happening anytime soon. The draft didn't make it to the floor. Whatever people say, it didn't... No, no one looked at it, so it's not going to be happening anytime soon. Apparently, there's another law that's being created for the DeFi sector, and part of the idea was from a lot of people who just I'm I I appreciate your optimism was that they would be making a law for the DeFi sector that would be beneficial to DeFi in some sort of way. I don't know how people got that into their head. So the actual draft, apparently from what we have seen, from what someone shared, apparently appears to be uh, not as strenuous as people believed it was going to be on the DeFi sector, but apparently it's going to call for the exact same things that are for the banking sector. The KYC, AML, give me your data, uh, show me your ID, where do you live, what's your blood type, all those kind of things for the bill. There's a tweet for it right here uh, where this guy shares all of it and says that he wants to be transparent or something like that. Cool. Amazing. Love your life. Um, the other part is, now let me be explicitly clear with this for those of you who don't really get it. The entire point of DeFi, it stands for decentralized finance. There is not supposed to be anyone or anything that explicitly runs the protocol. It is meant to be a community-run thing as it is decentralized. Bitcoin is not run or controlled by anyone because the nodes and the validators are around the world. They are not controlled by one single entity. The idea that this law... Now, once again, I don't even dabble in DeFi. It's simply me telling you what's going to happen. These laws will come out at some point. So don't don't act shocked when you get this news that this is going to be taking place. The issue that I have with all of this is is that I feel like a lot of times the people who create these laws don't understand how people in crypto work or how crypto actually works. There will be several protocols that will fall under 
these rules. As we've gone over thousands of times, a lot of these pro these DeFi protocols, a lot of them are not actually DeFi. There's a person in a room, in an office, who's making everything, and this is why the hacks and all these other things keep happening. There's no decentralization to them. However, uh, in the future, once those protocols have been swept under the KYC AML blanket, other protocols will begin to emerge that are actually decentralized, and there will be no way to track who made them, what made them, how they're made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. People will be able to run their own nodes for them. What I'm basically saying is that this is the same thing that happened before when it came to other proposed regulation in 2017, 2018 for the cryptocurrency space. Coins and other projects have since moved heavily away from those other laws or what they were capable of doing. And eventually in the future, uh, people will simply just use DeFi in a secure manner on platforms that already have, there, there are tons of platforms that already don't require any type of KYC AML. Uh, anyway, um, so the news is they're going to be, this is, this is a draft that has come out. Uh, apparently people are excited because it's not as bad as they thought it was going to be. This completely shatters any idea of what DeFi is. I'm tired of people creating things and then pretending that they're actually decentralized. Either people lose their money in them or fall prey to whatever other systems are out there. And then they end up going, well, it was decentralized until it wasn't because we had control over the entirety of the protocol. Remember the other one a couple of weeks ago who was like, well, if you if you check the, the, the frequently asked questions, once it's on our platform, it was our money. So we will eventually have proper DeFi platforms that will be using uh, mixers of coins and yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting future. A lot of it is already unfolding, but I don't, I, I think people were trying to spin this into something positive, but a lot of the DeFi platforms are just simply going to collapse. People use them for a decentralized way to be able to take out loans or use finance, not to simply, you could just go to Coinbase or Binance to do the exact same thing. That's the DeFi draft law. This was very popular. Everyone was talking about this and how cool it was going to be and how so this is this is garbage. This is this is this, this is the exact same thing that we've gotten before. It's just once again a blanket over the entire cryptocurrency industry dragging everyone back into the same rules before. Anyway, that's the DeFi uh what is it called? Draft bill leak news. Yeah, let's move on. And also in, sure, why not? I was expecting this, but not really. Cool, amazing for them. So remember the news that we got before that Grayscale was taking the SEC to court because they were like, you're terrible people and we need a Bitcoin ETF. And then we had news, I think yesterday or the day before, that there were apparently four companies who joined Grayscale's side with an amicus brief, basically announcing that they were going to be supporting them in some sort of way during the lawsuit. Well, Coinbase also filed an amicus brief as well to support Grayscale in their efforts to launch a uh, Bitcoin ETF and the whole thing that's happening with the SEC. Um, I truly do hope it works out for them. And, it, and I mean in the, in the nicest way. I have a feeling uh, Grayscale, no, Coinbase will uh, kindly back away in about six months when the when the kitchen gets too hot for them, because I think this is going to be a very intense battle between uh, both parties. The SEC is unrelenting in their idea that they should control every single thing that's taking place within the United States. And now they have a whole bunch of companies and institutions who are like, no, you don't. So I don't know what, like, what evidence could you provide? Like, what could Coinbase logically do in support of Grayscale to, ha to help them and that the outcome actually ends up in their favor. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah, I hope it works out for Grayscale. It would be great if uh, the lawsuit only took three months. It is probably going to take more than two years, similar to uh, Ripple's thing that they have going on. Uh, it would be nice if the SEC simply just let an ETF through, but that's never going to happen. I, I'm I'm telling you, some there's money being moved around somewhere in the background. Somebody's being paid off or something because it's a little bit too weird at this point. If I notice it and you have other people from from the SEC, what's that? What's that woman's name? Was was it Hester Pierce? 
who even came forward and she was like, yeah, something a bit odd is happening. Something's, you know, we should have had one a long time ago. And then the CFTC has come forward and then other regulatory bodies and the people from the Senate and Congress are now pushing back against the SEC. Somebody knows something. There's there's some briefcase wallet full of money that someone has acquired. Uh, remember even the the speculative news that we received a couple of days ago with someone saying that they were concerned or going to be looking into if members of the SEC are actually uh, uh, filling their bags or had coins from the lawsuits that they had before and were simply trying to short them or long them or whatever they were trying to do. Something's going on. Something very, very terrible is, is amiss, is afoot. Something horrible is happening. Uh, and the worst part is, once again, how do you regulate the regulators? That usually ends up being the problem. They're supposed to be protecting the American people, but you don't protect people four or five years later on false pretenses. So Coinbase is backing Grayscale's Bitcoin ETF attempt against, against the SEC. Hope it works out. I am usually the most I'm usually the most optimistic human being you will ever meet in your entire life. I don't feel too good about this one. The SEC is uh, that's the Coinbase news. Yeah, alrighty. Let's move on. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters: G B U Wally, Dotha Diddy. Manny Cryptos, Crypto Gambino, Bubble Mode, How's Life Austin, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Jamie Saad, Blockchain Simplified, and let's move on. Empire Queen, Roman Geba, Bitcoin, Ben Arachno, Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealers Den, Captain Something in the Z Way Lay, Mobarazi, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grillet, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Patrick Noster, Navarro Williams, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Steuer. Nostromo, John Sarson, The Anima, Rita, Bibliophobia, Todd, Mullis, Adam, Grace, and Wise Knight, Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Cole, D, 3D, Setsuna, Richie Rich, 3, Paxis, Nick, Manji, Alavori, Jim Garner, Jimmy Fox, Minting Coins, Yes to Crypto, Body McBoatface, Anytime Fitness, Monks, Corner Staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger, Macho, Nisa, On Crypto with Lionel, and Crayola, Michelle, you are L. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. Thank you to everyone who's a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, who has subscribed. To everyone out there who writes 1337 in the comment section, I do thank the immensely at the Memento. Bitcoin is currently down by 0.18%. See, it's sideways down. It's, it's down, but not really. It's literally basically where we were yesterday. Ethereum is also down by 0.1, ooh, excuse me, 0.2%. Wow, there was a... There's a movement there. Um, Binance Coin is up by 0.38%. XRP is up by 0.7%. Anything crazy? Any major movements that are happening? I know I saw one before. OKB is down by 5.2%. Leo said Unis Leo is down by 5.3%. Cosmos is down by 3.7%. Anything else? Quant is down by 7.68% high points. Luna Classic is up by 2%. X chain, whatever you are, is up by 14%. Fan fantastic. Hope it that's amazing. Anything else? Dun, 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 dun. Maker is down by 5.4. EOS is up by 1.3%. I'm not sure how this what is that coin even doing? Chiliz or Chili's C H I L I Z is down by 3.8% as well. Yeah. I do hope. That you've all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning. Is it? Is it just me, or is this week going by extremely fast? Like, I mean, like, like it's, 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 it's like this is what's happening with this week. I woke up and thought it was Tuesday, and I was like, no, it can't be. Yesterday was Sunday, so it has to be Monday. And I was like, no, I, I did stuff this week. It's definitely not Monday. It's Thursday. What? What's happening? What? what how is this? What is, what's going? Thank you all once again for watching, listening, commenting, and or subscribing. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.